God told Moses, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. In Leviticus 23, the recap of all the festivals begins with keep the Sabbath day. It's an important day, and we need to keep it. We need to keep it in the right perspective. God wants the very best for his followers, and so when God gives rules, it's for the very best. He wants us to know him. If we follow Jesus and the guidelines of his word, we're going to find in the end, even though there's some bumps along the way, we'll find that uh, what is good in life, and that's what God says is the best. Something that is good, very good, the biblical word is rest. R-E-S-T, rest. Take my yoke upon you, rest in me. In Genesis, after God created man and woman, the first thing they did was enjoy the Sabbath. On the sixth day, he created man, and the seventh day was the Sabbath. So the first thing they did was enjoy Sabbath rest. It was not a reward for six days of labor. It was the source of preparation for the six days to follow. God created humanity on the sixth day. They worshiped on the seventh, and it prepared them for the rest of the week. Rightly experiencing the Sabbath or Sunday is preparation in order to see things correctly so we can live a fruitful, pleasing life to God. Now, I need to clarify uh, about the Sabbath. The Sabbath was on Saturday. We don't worship on Saturday, and there's a reason for that. Jesus rose from the dead on Sunday. The early church worshiped on Sunday but even more important than that, if you look at Leviticus 23, verse 9 through 14, you see a description of the Feast of First Fruits. And Jesus was first fruits, the first to rise from the dead. And it was on Sunday, the day after the Sabbath. And so we worship on Sunday, and what we call it is the Lord's Day. So every time when I say the Sabbath, and I'll say the Sabbath because that's what Jesus was using in this scripture, this was before the, his death, burial, and resurrection, so he's referring to it as the Sabbath. He was worshiping on Saturday, but after his resurrection, it's Sunday, the Lord's Day. So when I use the word Sabbath, think Sunday, the Lord's Day. Think the Lord's Day. Uh, there are some that are teaching in today's world that we need to go back to worshiping on the Sabbath, Saturday. Now, that was the proper day to worship, and it was before Jesus died and rose again. But now we worship on the Lord's Day, and it's proper to worship on the Lord's Day. And there was one man that kept coming by my office and telling me, he's bringing me all this false doctrine, and I keep telling him, go back and read Leviticus 23. It'll tell you about this festival. Worship was on Sunday. First fruits is observed on Sunday. The early church worshiped on Sunday. Look in Acts. The first the church was worshiping on the Lord's Day, and he just ignores what I say. The world, those who've made up their minds, they want what they want, will say what they want, believe what they want. Truth has nothing to do with it. And that's one of the purposes of Sunday, is to realign with truth. To, we, we get skewed during the week sometimes. When we're by ourselves, alone, we can get skewed real easily. We start thinking this, and that leads to that, and that, and that. Pretty soon we're way out in left field, usually just a little bit, not way out in left field. And, and then when we come to church on Sunday, we come back center again. We center on Jesus Christ. We center on who he is, what he did, what he means, and what it's all about. And so Sunday is the day of worship. In Matthew 12, Jesus was trying to teach the right perspective of the Sabbath to the Pharisees. They had it so skewed through the years that it, they were missing the point altogether. The purpose of worship. There is a purpose but why do we have to come on Sunday? Do you remember when you were a child and your parents said, let's go to church? You said, why? How many of you had to get your clothes ready on Saturday night, polish your shoes? I don't know why I had to polish my shoes every week. I didn't wear them but an hour a week. But we had to polish our shoes on Saturday night and we had to put our clothes out and get ready for church the next day. And we still had to rush or we'd miss our ride. <laughs> Dad would get in the car and he was going to take off. We didn't hurry. We'd be carrying our shoes out in the car to put them on. When I was at seminary in, in Wake Forest, North Carolina, there was a, a couple that lived across the street in the house. That, they were students. He was a student. 
And one Sunday I looked out and one of his children was running out to the car with his socks and shoes in his hand. Thought, oh, that's great. <laughs> it reminded me of my childhood. What's the big deal, though? And I want to look at some truths about why do we worship on Sunday? What's the importance? Do you need to keep on doing it? Does it matter if you miss? Does it matter at all? Could we just say, well, we're going to start worshiping on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday. Is Saturday really better? Let's look at what Jesus taught. Jesus taught correctly, and he was teaching the Pharisees. We can learn from the teachings of Jesus. First of all, first of all Jesus observed the Sabbath correctly. He had no fault. He had no sin. And what he did was correct. And when the scripture says to keep the Sabbath in a certain way, Jesus kept it in that way, in the right spirit. It was normal for Jesus, not something on that Sabbath alone. And I understand the Hebrew, the word Sabbath is a plural word here, meaning Sabbaths. And so it wasn't just that one day that Jesus was doing that. It was every Sabbath. And if you look throughout, especially Matthew, which was written to a Jewish audience, uh, Mark was written to a Gentile audience, it was the, uh, what Peter was preaching, Mark wrote down, and Luke was written to get the details right, John wrote more of his discipleship type book, and so Matthew was writing to a Jewish audience, and Jesus was trying to correct the teaching of the Pharisees to be a more correct teaching about the Sabbath, and so often... You see in the scripture where Jesus did a healing or something like that on a Sabbath, on their, their day. He was teaching. He said the disciples were hungry. The scripture says that. The disciples were hungry. But it doesn't say anything about Jesus being hungry. He may have been hungry too, but he wasn't picking the grain. Now, the, if you go back to the law of Moses, if somebody was walking through your field and they were hungry, it was, it was okay for them to pick your grain and eat it. They could not put it in a bag. They couldn't harvest it and go sell it somewhere. But if they were hungry, they could pick what they needed to eat. And that was okay. That was legal. That was what was done. But in verse 1, the disciples were hungry. They began to pluck the stalks and they ate. And here they were in trouble because they picked it, they threshed it, and they ate it. We're told it was the Sabbath day. And it seems like it's reiterated. It's real important to know this is the Sabbath day. This is the day that they didn't do anything. The Pharisees said, are they transgressing the Sabbath? And the, the, are, the, are the disciples violating the rules of the Sabbath that Moses gave us? They're questioning the theology here. So Jesus was concerned about the right understanding about Sabbath and what the Sabbath should produce. Coming to church should be for a reason. When you come to church, it should produce something in your heart, in your life. If you come to church and you go home and nothing happened except you were here with friends, then you miss the point altogether. We should say it's the Lord's Day and what should happen on Sunday for the believer. And so we think about that. We have a, when we have a right understanding of the Lord's Day, it will give us a right perspective of life, a kingdom perspective of life. How you see life will change. We live in a very, very secular society. That is anything but godly. And we live in a very ungodly society. And our society will hammer away at our faith in Jesus Christ, at our beliefs in Jesus Christ, our doctrine of Christ. And it will hammer and hammer and hammer away and, and we'll find ourselves questioning our faith. So we come to church on Sunday, we worship together, and we're realigned in the truth of the Word of God. When we have a kingdom understanding, being concerned about the needs of others is going to be at the heart of our mindset. One thing about the Sabbath, one thing about Sunday, we should be concerned about others. Church is not a place where for you to come and control and get what you want. It's not a club that you've joined, that it's important that you rise to the ranks. The church is to worship Jesus. The church is about submitting to Jesus Christ. It's about learning from Him how to do for others. Not for yourself. If you've come and you're all about yourself this morning, things have to be a certain way because you think they need to be, you're missing the point. That's not worship. Worship leads us to submit to Jesus Christ. Worship leads us to think about the needs of others and what's going on in the lives of others. I've seen through the years mighty ugly behavior when somebody did not get what they wanted in church. 
I've seen grown adults have a temper, temper tantrum right there. I've seen grown adults campaigning against whatever they didn't want to get what they did want. Some have even left church because they didn't get what they wanted. And I always wonder when, when things don't go your way at church and you leave because of it and you go to another church, are you getting what you want there too? And, and it's not. None of that's responding properly. John, if you look in the Gospel of John and the letters of John, would say those people probably aren't even Christians. Some of them are not. Some of them are just very immature Christians. But you don't come to church. And church is not about you. Church is about Jesus Christ. You come to church to worship Jesus Christ. You come to church to find his will for your life. You come to submit to him and his will. It's all about being in touch with Jesus. And then Jesus was correcting the Pharisees' understanding. They came and said, your disciples... They're doing what's not legal to do on the Sabbath. But Jesus said to them, Jesus didn't speak with malice or anger. He wasn't scolding them. He simply responded. He wanted to teach truth. If you want to know ultimate truth, it's in Jesus Christ. It's in the Word of God. Our society says there is no ultimate truth. Pilate said, what is truth? Our world doesn't think there's an ultimate truth because they've never found ultimate truth, and it's only found in Jesus Christ, in a relationship with him. Jesus' uh, response came from the word of God. He went back to the law, and he brought it up, and he said, this is what God's word means. The basis for understanding scripture is scripture. If you want to know what the Bible means, then you need to study the Bible. You need to read the Bible and know it. The Bible gives us principles and helps us understand other events in the Bible. And it goes back and forth and it reinforces itself. It never contradicts. The Bible never contradicts itself. As some would say, there are some statements in one place and then another. It seems like it does, but when you know the truth, it doesn't. The Old Testament is foundational to understanding the New Testament. I talked to a lady one time and she said, well, we don't study the Old Testament because that's, oh, we just study the New Testament as if that was some superior thing to do. And that was not it at all. If you don't understand the Old Testament, have a thorough understanding of the Old Testament, there's no way you can properly understand the New Testament. Now, you'll gain some insight and it'll be some nice words, but you won't have a full, complete understanding of the New Testament until you do understand the Old Testament. We need to be reading the whole Bible, not parts of it. We need to be reading the whole Bible. We read that Jesus said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry and the ones with him? How he entered into the house of God and ate the showbread. The showbread was a symbolic expression. It was placed on a table. It was in the holy place of the temple. Where the priest would enter once a week and exchange the new showbread for the old showbread. And then with the old showbread, the priest would all take it and they would eat it. It wouldn't be a lot, but it would satisfy Generally, the showbread was only for the priest. The priests were Levites, but the priests were the descendants of Aaron, Moses' brother. And the rest of the Levites were their helpers. There's a difference between priest and Levites. The priests did the work in the holy place, and they, they ate the showbread. Well, there's a principle here. The Sabbath and the law in general was not given to make life miserable. There's not a rule in the Bible that's given to make your life hard or difficult or miserable or to inflict suffering or pain or hardship. There's nothing in the Bible for that intent. The rules of the Bible teach us to trust God. The laws and the principles and the rules in the Bible teach us to know God. And when you go by them, you will know God better. There's a principle here to do unto others as you would have them do to you. It's to help others. Always, always, God is wanting to bless people. He wants to bring life. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life more abundantly. He didn't come to make life hard. That's what the Pharisees were doing. They were making rules upon rules upon rules. They called them fences. And they would make a fence so that they wouldn't violate a law. Well, they'd make a fence, they wouldn't violate the fence. And then another fence, so not to violate the fence. And so they had so many fences made, they were far away from the true meaning of the word. 
the Pharisees were making life miserable. Some churches make life miserable. They say, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that, it's Sunday. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that Sunday is a day to worship God, to know God better, come back to center with your thinking, get things right with God, get truth of God, and think about the needs of others and minister to others who are in need that you come across, that you know. It's not about you, it's about Jesus Christ and about others. The showbread would normally be forbidden for David and his men to eat, as Jesus pointed out, but because of their absolute need, it became permissible for them to eat it. They had a great need. Meeting a great need of people is more important than the rules of the Sabbath. So Jesus interpreted the law correctly. Normally it wasn't permissible for David and the men to eat, only the priest alone. And Jesus said in verse 5, have you read the law? And these were law scholars. You know, they could quote you the law. They'd read it. He said, have you not read in the law? And he referred to the law, and he gave a correct interpretation. Theirs were incorrect interpretations that had grown through the years, more and more incorrect, and he went back to the correct interpretation. The New Testament truth was best understood by a right understanding of the Old Testament. He said, have you not read that the priests in the temple would desecrate the Sabbath? Now, that sounds terrible. But what happened, there were laws about what you do, what you how you worship God and all. And the priests, in order to make worship happen, had to violate some of those rules. It's just like you say, well, you're not supposed to work on Sunday. Well, what does the preacher do? This, they, you say, I only work one day a week. And uh, so if that's true, we can address that later. If, if that's true, then I'm working on Sunday. I'm violating the Sabbath. Well, if I don't, then worship doesn't happen. And the same thing was happening with priests here. Now, I'm going to clarify I do only work one day a week. That is true. That is my day off. And it about kills me. There's a lot of yard work to do, a lot of other stuff to do. And so I really work hard that day. The rest of the time, serving the Lord, that's just downright fun, enjoyable. I enjoy studying the Word. I enjoy visiting folk and meeting needs and listening when people need to share something. That's just a pleasure to serve the Lord. But I do only work one day a week on my day off. Well, the principle of worship is important. And Jesus said, but I say to you, one here, one who is here is greater than the temple. And of course, Jesus referring to himself. He's greater than the, the temple, greater than the Sabbath. But you do not know what is the intent of the Sabbath. Mercy I desire, not sacrifice. From Hosea 6.6. 6. He's quoting Hosea. He desires mercy, not ritual. He desires mercy, not just going through the motions. He desires that you engage in what's going on. Don't just be here to be here. Engage in what God is doing and wanting us to do in your heart. God wants to speak to your heart. God's presence is here. Hopefully you sense that. Hopefully you're in tune with the Lord and what's going on. And he said, just the ritual, that's not a bad habit to come to church. And, if you, and don't, don't interpret that I'm saying if it's just a habit, don't come. If it's a habit, come anyway. Maybe the Lord will speak to you anyway. But it's even better if your desire is to be here because you want to worship Him. Your desire is to know Him better. Your desire is for Him to speak to you. Your desire is for Him to convict you of sin and unrighteousness and to lead you in the paths of righteousness for His sake. That's what worship is about. Jesus taught about having a godly perspective of mercy toward others. We should learn when we worship together on Sunday. We should learn. I put my desire second to put in Jesus first. I worship with others. I don't worship my own way. I've heard through the years, oh, I've, I've got my own way of worship. I don't go to church. That's not even biblical. I worship with others. I think about the needs of others over my own needs. And you've come with all kind of problems. There was a lady at my last church. I was talking to her at her house one time. And she said there wasn't a day gone by she didn't have pain all over. She just had arthritis all over. But when she came to church, she was smiling and she was a pleasure to see. And she was encouraging to others. She was concerned about the needs of others more than her own pain that she lived with every day. Think about the needs of others. 
And then think about the needs of others, not to use religious dogma and doctrine to exclude someone or manipulate things to get your own way or have a harsh interpretation so that it can be us for no more. Pretty stern, isn't it? And then think back. What is Sunday about? It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. We come to worship Jesus. And Jesus is love. Jesus loves all people. And he wants us to love each other. He wants us to love strangers that come in here. He wants us to love people who come in that are dressed differently or look differently or even have some different worship habits than we do. Jesus taught, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. In Deuteronomy, we read, this command I give you today is not too hard for you. It's not beyond what you can do. And so when we think about the Sabbath, remember, it's about the love of Jesus. And it helps get, get us back centered because if you've been in the world, I know that you've been aggravated with somebody this week. It may be somebody at the red light or a cashier you had to deal with, or if you bought fast food, well, good luck with that. And we come back to church, so Lord, forgive them. <laughs> uh, or if being in the South, I may say, God bless their heart. But we come back and remember, Jesus is about love folk like that. Love the world. The disciples were innocent. They took the grain and ate. They did it because of hunger, not personal gain. They had a need that needed to be met. And then in verse 8, Sunday's all about putting Jesus first in your life. It's a priority that we have. The Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. The only way we rightly understand how to apply the Sabbath truth to our life is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Through the years, I've had several churches where there were members that were not saved. I knew that because they were saved after I left, and they told me. And they wanted to, they saw the church more like a club, a place you join, and then you come in and you kind of do things, and you get things what you want, and, and politic for it maybe, and, and um, work to have what you want. The church is not a club. And if you see it as a club, then you've got a wrong understanding. The church is for people who have trusted in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And we come to worship. Now, anybody's welcome to come hear about Jesus. But sometimes people fake it and they join and say, Oh, I want to be baptized and join the church. And without discerning correctly, they're allowed to join. And they see the club, the church as a club, and they see the church in this very secular way. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you may feel awkward. You may have the wrong understanding of what the Lord's Day is all about. It's for those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. When you do that, you submit to Him, to give Him your life. And so you understand that Sunday is about submitting to Jesus Christ because we renew our life with Him. We rededicate our life and heart to Him when we come and we worship together. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. It is through Jesus that Sabbath principles can be understood. There's not a right and wrong except to worship Jesus properly. And he said, I, I desire mercy, not sacrifice and ritual. Rightly understanding the Lord's day will produce mercy. It will cause you to become more concerned about somebody else. And you won't be leaving thinking you've been and been hurt by what somebody said, or you've been slighted by not getting what you want, or somebody disagree with you, if that happens, then you didn't come for the right reason because we come for Jesus. There are other people here, but we're not here for people. We're here to worship Jesus. And we don't decide whether we like that church or not like that church because of a person. We come to worship Jesus. Now, people are going to say and do things, no matter where you go. If you're in public, if you're around people, they'll say and do things. Sometimes it hurts your feelings, sometimes you take it wrongly, or whatever. That's not what it's about. We worship Jesus today. And then, uh, it said in leaving there, he came to their synagogue. The Pharisees invited Jesus to their synagogue. They thought they can get Jesus on their turf, and they can really get him trapped, and they can mess him up with the people and with maybe with the Roman government and get him in trouble, and they'll shut him down and people will quit following him. The synagogue of the Pharisees, now keep in mind, the synagogue was not the temple. The temple, there was just one temple, and the temple is where sacrifices were offered. 
There were many synagogues. Wherever there were 10 or 12 men, age 12 and over males, a synagogue could be formed. And a synagogue was a place for mainly for teaching. And so they were at the synagogue. It was their place of teaching. It embraced their dogma. And scripture says there was a man having a withered hand and they asked him saying, is it lawful on the Sabbaths, plural, to heal? They asked him, the scripture tells us, to discredit him. If they could discredit him, maybe the people would quit following him and come back to following the Pharisees. They were not concerned with the handicapped man whatsoever. They didn't care if his hand was withered or not. They didn't care if he could make a living or not. They didn't care about him at all, but they were using him to entrap Jesus. So Jesus told a parable. He said, if a sheep would fall into a pit on the Sabbath day. And this was a dilemma because if a sheep fell in a pit, well, that was, we're talking about money here. A sheep costs something. And if the law said you couldn't pick anything up that weighed over a certain weight, and that that would be extra work. A sheep would not be comfortable in a hole all day, no matter what day it was. And according to the teachings of the Pharisees, the sheep would have to stay there. It'd have to be uncomfortable. It'd have to not be near water, not good pasture to eat. It'd even be life-threatening, perhaps. But since it's a Sabbath day, they couldn't lift a finger to help that sheep. Now, no one had that view. Of course they would help the sheep. So Jesus expanded a little bit. Isn't the life of a man more important than a sheep. And he had a withered hand. He couldn't work. He couldn't support his family or himself. Isn't it important, more important, that he's helped than a sheep? They did not understand the concept of helping someone in need, saving a life. So Jesus said, how much more value is a man than a sheep? So the principle here, on the days of worship, it's lawful to do good. It's lawful to do good. And if it's extra steps involved or if it's lifting something extra heavy or if it's missing a certain thing to do good for somebody else that you get, you don't get anything in reward for it. You don't get anything back for it. You don't get brownie points or money or anything. You're just helping somebody because they're in need. He said, that's what the Sabbath's about. That's what the Lord's Day is about. Proper worship leads us to do that which is good. Mercy. Show mercy to others. We give up our prized seats when somebody else comes in to, as a guest and they don't know that's your prized seat and they sit there. Well, we say, great, somebody else is here and we find a new prized seat. We have 16 pews over here and 16 over here. All of them are good prized seats. If you haven't tried them all yet, you ought to try them out. Try a different pew every week and find out your pew's not the only one. It may be that you need to dress lightly because we make the building too hot, or it may be you need to bring a coat because the building is too cold, but you're not going to grumble and, and complain about it because you're here to worship, and you'll just do what you have to do to, to be comfortable yourself because you're worried about others, and you're willing to wear a coat when it's too cold because others are too hot. Does that make sense? Does that, does that come across as we need to put all the petty stuff aside? All the stuff that doesn't honor and lift and magnify Jesus Christ, let's put that aside. It's not important. It doesn't even need to be brought up in church, worship service, because we're here, remember about Jesus. You think he was uncomfortable on the cross? You think he hurt? You think he got his feelings hurt when the two being crucified with him were making fun of him and the soldiers that nailed him to the cross were making fun of him and even those walking by saw him were making fun of him. You, didn't, you think that didn't hurt his feelings? Yet he stayed there because he loves us so much. And then we come and say, oh, it's a little too hot in here. It's a little too cold in here. Somebody's in my seat. See how petty that sounds? And on and on and on that pettiness can go. I've heard so much through the years. Something like 42 years I've been hearing that kind of stuff. And that's not of God. That doesn't honor God. It doesn't honor the congregation. We need to say, I'm here for Jesus Christ. I want Jesus in my life so bad, I don't care if it's uncomfortable. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what I have to do. I want Jesus in my life. I want to worship Jesus so much, I'm going to do whatever to know Him. I understand in Europe, some of the churches... Don't even have pews. 
They stand the whole time. But they love Jesus so much. They want to be there. They go early to be there. The Pharisees, in contrast, the people were excited about the man's being hand, man's hand being restored. But the Pharisees, in contrast, not acknowledging the power of Jesus, they just overlooked that Jesus had the power to heal that man. They took counsel against him how to destroy him. If we can't have our petty things uh, our way, we'll destroy him. We'll run him off. We'll get somebody that is concerned about our pettiness. The Sabbath truth gives us a right perspective for understanding, first of all, the will of God. What's the will of God? What's the mercy of God? And how to be a blessing to others. See how it transforms our life. Regular Sunday worship is only a problem when you have something else that's a higher priority. Something else you want to do instead. Now, I know there are some times we have health problems, and that's understandable. Sometimes you have a job, it's important that you work that job. We understand that. That's a good thing. That's showing mercy. But if it's just, you want to be at a ball game? You want to go fishing? Well, fishing may be questionable. I like to fish. But <laughs> anything you do that you don't have to do, and you'll let it bump worship, that's putting that as a priority. I got some new medicine from my doctor. It came in a box. And after using it for a while, I noticed that this paper was in it. You know what the paper is? It tells you, you, you could die if you take this. Well, I unfolded this paper. And it's amazing. This side, too. Two sides. Now, on this paper gives the chemical composition of the medicine I'm taking. I don't understand any of that part. I don't, I'm not a chemist. It tells the research of that piece of medicine, that kind of medicine, how it affects people. And in a small section, it tells how to take it. But it has all this information about that medicine. But you know, it was, it was a couple weeks before I even noticed this in there and, and kind of looked over it. I trusted my doctor. He prescribed it, and I took it. And it, it has helped. And I trusted my doctor. And I didn't have to read all this. This is um, almost ridiculous. But I trusted my doctor and took the medicine. And I was thinking about that. If we trust the Lord, he's given us his word. Can we not just do what his word says and trust him in that? Anybody want to read that after you're welcome? The Bible is there for us to read. He's made it where we can understand it. Why don't we just do it? Just like I trusted my doctor and I took the medicine without understanding. There's things in the Bible you may not understand. Just trust God. This is the way to go. Let's keep Sunday set aside for worship. Let's apply God's word to our life every day as we read our, have our devotion time. Let's trust God's way. Let's trust him. Just trust him and do what he says. And then we can trust to have the best blessings from God.